Hello everybody, today we're doing a video in 2006 Mazda 6 and we're going to be installing our GTA car kit. We'll start off with what tools you'll need. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver and you also, you'll need a 10mm socket with an extension. We'll start off without using any tools. We're gonna, this is a manual car. Automatic is different but the shift knob comes off the same way and we're just gonna screw it off, take it off counterclockwise it just comes off because we're gonna be removing this middle, middle uh, cup holders and around the gear knob so to remove the cup holders they come off first it's better to open the armrest and just use your hands and it comes off first time it's a little hard but so this, this part is two pieces, so it's separate from the, from the part where your shift knob is and it just comes off. Uh, you have these two main clips uh, on, on the front and these ones on the side. Because you spill coffee and stuff like that, it might be a little sticky when you take it off, just to note that. The next step is to remove this piece around the shift knob. Also, same thing, it's just held on clips. Comes off very easy. Uh, you'd also need to disconnect uh, this uh, the cigarette lighter uh, jack. So, when you have it connected, you just have to press on this clip right here and it will come off. I'm gonna put it to the side. Once you remove it, you're gonna see two, actually four screws, two at, two at the bottom and two on the top, if you can see it, so these two and the two on top. So the ones on the bottom, we don't have to remove, we have to remove these ones, the ones on top, so two of them, we're gonna do it a little bit later on. We also need to remove these uh, vent controls. And when, once you remove them, you'll see uh, two screws. I think if you have older, I mean uh, newer, no, actually older version of this car, you won't have these two screws, but t take, take them off anyways and see if you have them. Because when you're going to be removing the radio, you don't want to break anything. So we're going to remove these two screws later on also. Right, for now, we need to remove the glove box. It comes off very easy. You have to open the glove box. You have to press it on both sides and it kind of drops a little bit and then you, from the bottom you have to pull it towards you on both sides and so this is what's holding it so there's on both sides the thing, two, thing, uh, two plastic tabs on top and this is the main thing where the glove box moves and you just have to pull it out and when you're putting it back make sure it goes all the way in there's also a string on one side but it's kind of it's not in our way so we're gonna rest it, the glove box like this there's one main screw that is holding this uh, the radio and it's uh, it's kind of hard to see uh, maybe we can get some light and I'll show you so you'll be able to see can't even see it myself so there is a 10 millimeter right there that 10 millimeter bolt is what's holding uh, pretty much holding the whole radio except for those four screws that we showed you so that's the one we have to remove and for that you need an extension and uh, so we're now gonna go ahead and remove that one a ball that we showed you on these four screws, so two on top and two on the bottom. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So we just removed the four screws and one bolt on the side of the radio. And now the radio is ready to come out. It's kind of hard to get it out because uh, it's sitting pretty tight in there. But uh, I'd suggest putting the hand behind the radio, kind of pushing it with one hand and with the other hand pulling it out so that way you can get it out 
so it comes off. Once the radio is off, you're gonna see there's an open port right here. Uh, I don't know if, you, if this camera can see it, but it's this port is right here, and this is where our kit is gonna plug in. And uh, we have the kit already assembled. So you have the module in the middle and you have, this is what's going to go into the back of the radio and it's going to be going facing down and on the other side you have an Apple cable for any Apple product and also an auxiliary. Our kit comes with both cables, we're just not running the auxiliary cable as far as our customer doesn't want it and we're going to take this connection and plug it back inside the radio just like that and that's pretty much it for connecting the kit but you also you have to test it before you assemble everything back so we're gonna test it right now we're gonna put the key in and put it to the accessory position so the radio turns on right now we're in our FM mode we're gonna press the CD button twice and if you don't have a CD inside you only have to press it once and this is what the option is gonna show, it's gonna show EX4 track 7 and this is uh, gonna stay the same if you plug in the auxiliary and you can listen to auxiliary in this mode but once you plug in your iPhone 4 or any other Apple product it's gonna go and automatically change to uh, EX1 track 1 and so on this this is in in EX1 this is the hybrid mode so you can switch the songs both from the radio and uh, from 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 your actual so the iPod is unlocked and you can switch it from both you can also fast forward and if you have steering wheel controls like this car does, you can also switch the songs from the steering wheel control. So you have full control the same way as you have on your with your CD. So now another neat feature that we have, so this is the hybrid mode, but if you go, if you listen to your music by playlist, you can switch a disc uh, by this button. So disc up is gonna change to EX2. And so this is our first playlist, the iPod gets locked and you can only switch it from the radio and uh, so this is EX3, this is our second playlist, EX4 is our third, so it's just one behind. So we're going to be in our EX6 which is our fifth playlist and you switch the songs both from the radio controls, steering wheel controls, everything works. Also, if you just turn off the car right now and leave and leave the iPod plugged in, it's gonna stop at the, it's gonna pause at the same place, and once you turn it back on, it's gonna continue off. It's not gonna be playing when the car is off, so it's gonna be paused. Same thing if you disconnect and connect it back, it's gonna remember the position. And uh, that's pretty much it. In order to unlock the iPod, you have to switch back to EX1. So if you want to get control of your iPod, you just switch to EX1 and it automatically switches to the hybrid mode in which you can control from the iPhone. So that's pretty much for testing. Make sure that all uh, that when you play the music, that sound plays through all the speakers and stuff like that. That all the controls work. Once that's figured out figured out we're gonna have to run the cable and this car has a couple options so you can run it to the glove box because you already have it off and you can also run it to the armrest that's what we're gonna do with this car so pretty much you have everything off and you have once you remove this uh, I don't know carpet from your <laughs> from your armrest you're gonna see there's already the holes there so you can just kind of knock them out a little bit in order to feed the cable through and it's very easy to run it right now through the middle as I said you can run it to the glove box 
it's up to you it's, you have a lot of options in this car and uh, after you run the cable you can put everything back and start enjoying your GTA car kit in uh, 2006 Mazda 6 uh, we hope you like the video and we try to make it as uh, easy as it is and it's not it's very easy to do it on this car and anybody can do it so we hope you like the video and we'll see you next time